In today's quick tip video tutorial, I'm going to show you the process I typically use when setting up LODs using the automated um, LOD generation tool inside Unreal Engine, and then also how to verify that they're swapping out of the proper distances. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we're going to take this mesh, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it so we can show a couple things a little bit later. And let's go ahead and open it. And then inside of here, you can see that we only have the base LOD. So this is just the mesh being imported as default. So to go ahead and uh, process the LODs on this one, if we expand the LOD settings and we can choose any one of these presets. Now, I want to make a note that these presets are actually stored in one of the any files in the engine. So you can customize this for your workflow, um, your production studio, whatever you want. You can customize them however you want to. But what I want to make note is that there's nothing really special about these beyond the fact that they are just a set of predefined uh, rules. So minimum LODs, LOD switch out distances, so on and so forth. So nothing fancy. You can customize them um, to your liking as much as you need. Uh, but in this case, let's just go ahead and do, uh, we'll do a large prop. It'll prompt us and we say, yes, we want to continue. And now we can see that we have the LODs. And again, based on this large prop, it automatically generates four for us. So if we step through, so instead of auto switching, so LOD zero will be our base, no changes. LOD one, you see here drops, triangle count drops. We'll go to LOD two, drops even further. Now we're losing some of the materials and LOD three, finally to the last bit. So that's the quick process and you can change that. You can come in here, you can change the settings. Um, that's all we need. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and jump into where we're going to customize this to make sure that it switches out at our proper distances. So to do that first, I'm going to go under lit. I'm going to level of detail correction and mesh LODs. So here's where we can actually see them switching. Now if we zoom in, white is LOD zero and changes to red for LOD one. Should go green for LOD two and finally blue for our remaining LOD. Okay. Now in this situation that I have it colorized, Let's sit on the screen. I don't want it to switch out this soon, right? Like I don't want to have to be right up on it before it switches out on me. So to do that, let's go ahead and open the guy right here and we'll keep this guy up here. So there's a couple things to pay attention to. The most important thing is this current screen size. That's the number that we're going to plug in. So if we expand out here, LOD zero, this should give us the settings that we need. We'll go ahead and expand this. Okay, and then there's our selections, and here's our screen size. Okay, so to start with, we want to adjust when this is going to fade out, right? We want it to fade out um, not as quickly. So to do that, you notice right here, I've got screen size set at one, okay? And I can't do anything with it. So we need to expand the LOD settings tab and this auto compute LOD distances, just uncheck it. Now this becomes available. So we'll go in here and we'll select LOD zero, right? This is our base. LOD, no changes. We'll go to the next one, LOD one. Notice things change a little bit. And we've got this on-screen size of 1.1. Okay, so how do you pick the number to start with? Honestly, you just, it, it's kind of just trial and error. So right here, 1.14 is the on-screen size for this first switch out, right? So if I zoom in a little bit, and we can see it's kind of close. So let's zoom out here and let's say that in my scene, this is the distance I want it to swap out to my LOD one, right? And screen size of 0.33. So I'm going to put that in. Let's do a 0.33 and it's automatically updated. So if we look in our viewport now, right? Remember, as soon as we zoomed out from this level, it changed. Notice it doesn't change yet. It won't change until it hits that magic 33% on screen size. Um, okay, so I'm happy with that. That's fine. Um, however, what you can do is let's say, uh, kind of reversing it, that this is the size on screen that I want it to view. So I'm gonna keep dropping this till k.2 works. So go 0 0.25, 0 0.22, 0.21. So about 0.21 is where I have the switching. So that's just another way you can get to that. I'm gonna change it back to our 0.33. And if we zoom out, if you notice something, it should switch pretty quickly. Um, this isn't too bad. I mean, it, I've seen it in other situations where, you know, you, you change this, the, the first LOD, and then all of a sudden it's just like red, green, blue, and it's real quick. Uh, it, it rotates through that. So uh, this one didn't do it too bad, but I'll still step through the process to show you how to get the next numbers. Now, 
As a general rule of thumb, what I usually find in my workflow is that whatever the screen size is of the LOD preceding the one that I'm trying to update, I usually cut it in half. So what I mean by that, um, I'll change this to 0.3 for easy numbers. So that's going to be my first LOD switch will be to my red, right? And then the next one, so I'll select LOD2, notice it's a 0.1, I'm going to change it to 0.1. 0.15, right? Half a 0 0.3, 0 0.15. And then find my last one, LOD3, 0.15 be 0 0.075 for my last one. So we'll see how this swaps out. So there's our there's our base LOD, our first LOD, second LOD, and third LOD. So that's usually general rule of thumb that gets me right in the bulk park of what I need. Now, you know, if you're passing this off to a level designer or somebody else who's going to take over it, those numbers get them close enough, but if they need to make additional tweaks, they can. Um, however, um, they'll really appreciate you for setting this up ahead of time so they don't have to go in and change uh, everything. And finally, the last bit uh, that I want to show you is, we'll dive into this a little bit, is the ability to delete an LOD. So, you know, say, for example, you do have a very low resolution mesh, but you still want to leverage the LODs with it to get to performance savings, but you don't like the last LOD. Say, for example, you know, it's a box, a cube, and it c crushes it so much that it's it's absolutely pointless. So to do that, the easiest way to do it is... Come into your um, your LOD picker, and you can choose. So actually, we'll step through this. So this is our base LOD, right, which would be LOD 0. We'll go to 1. Notice there's not much of a change. Let's go to LOD 2. If you notice, it it took away some of those small details. And then finally, LOD 3, this is the final one. Uh, and you can see here what I kind of mean with that that mesh degradation. Now, granted, this won't be seen until you're far away. Not a huge deal. But, you know, let's say, for example, that this was even even further collapsed down to where it just looks terrible. So let's say we don't want this third LOD. So I'll select it down here in my LOD settings. I'm just going to do remove LOD. Say yes. And it should switch me. So now we're back to LOD 2. And if you notice, I no longer have an LOD 3. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and undo that real quick because I want to show another thing. So that's that's just the quick way that you you remove LODs. You see here we have four materials, right? We've got the base metal, we've got kind of this chrome, uh, I think it's on the hinges, and then we've got this this green LED and this blue LED. Um, there are situations where, so for example, if I select LED three here, or you can also do it up here, LED three. If you notice that. What what kind of looks silver here right now, um, that was blue originally. So if I go to the previous one, right, it's not there, LOD1, there's my blue. So to change that, you can select here. So we'll go to LOD2, which is gone. You can see it replaced this metal. I'll select here. It's my blue LED. Now, something to note here, which is really nice. Now, right, you could go over to your content browser. You can select. But if you notice in the LOD settings, right, I don't have the ability, like this little arrow here, to select a material from my uh, material library. That's because it's referencing the materials uh, that you've applied to the base mesh. So that's why you have this selection here. But in the LOD generation process, it swapped out the blue LED for this silver. So I can quickly change that to LED blue. There we go. And then we'll go to LOD three and we'll change this as well. So now if we go to auto, you should see that it should properly maintain. There's the dip and there's our um, where a third LED and it has the blue light in it. So if you end up having materials that, that pop out, um, that's how you select it in there as well. So that concludes the wrap up of um, the process that I typically use when importing new meshes, um, automatically adding the UVs to it, um, going in and changing the on-screen size for when it flips out, um, or I'm sorry, when it switches out. And then uh, last bit where you need to modify some of your LOD settings to make sure that um, if you need to delete it, when you change material highlights, um, that's the process to do that. So hope you enjoyed this quick tip. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments if you want more of these um, or if you guys have ideas for things that you would like to see as well um, on quick setups. Um, I'd love to be able to show you guys some of those things. So again, thanks for watching.